we have a load bearing plate there are links and there is nut actually there are two nuts one on either side and then we have a base plate probably you have seen this toggle jack also called as the scissor jack in your car the key here is on one side you have left hand screws on the other side you have right hand screws so depending upon how you rotate the screw the jack can be raised or lower so what you have is you have nut here this is the screw this is nut and this is where the load is resisted this part is resting on the ground now how would we design something like this again we start with the specifications what is the load p that needs to be raised but in addition to the the load we need to know the angles of closing and angles at opening now what i mean by that so i want you to look at two configurations in one configuration the toggle jack is completely closed so it is something like this and this is the most compact way the jack can be stored in other configuration the jack would be extended so jack will be extended so now the question is depending upon the angle the force on the screw is going to change so let me give you the problem setup so think about this load p half of this load will come onto the link on the left and half of the load will be on the link to the right now if you look at the free body diagram i want you to look at the free body diagram this load part of this load will be coming on to this link 1 and the reason i say part of it because please note that there is this angle theta so this load is p by 2 this angle theta summation of forces in the y direction is equal to 0 that gives me p by 2 going in the downward direction plus l1 cosine theta going in the upward direction so i get the one condition that allows me to find l1 as p divided by 2 cosine theta c theta is a short form for cosine theta now what happens next now please understand this nut so let's look at this l1 this nut is going to support the load in the horizontal direction so this l1 a component of l1 this component of l1 will be in the direction of the the screw one thing that we can visualize is this is a right angle triangle so if this angle is theta this angle is 90 minus theta or i would call this alpha so i'm going to call this alpha and alpha is equal to 90 minus theta so applying the equations of equilibrium 
summation of forces in the x direction is equal to zero. This force on the nut, I'm going to call this F, is going to be L1 cosine alpha. This would be in the minus direction plus F is equal to zero. So what that means is I get F is equal to L1 cosine alpha. Now please understand alpha is 90 minus theta. So cosine 90 minus theta. Cosine 90 minus theta is sine theta. So it becomes L1 sine theta. And please note L1 is equal to P by two cosine theta. So P by two sine theta divided by cosine theta that gives me p by 2 tan theta is equal to s. Now what that means, and this is something that I want you to remember, is even though the load is to be lifted, is p. So please understand the car weighs or the load on this jack is p. This is the load on jack. But load on screw, on screw is equal to P by two tan theta. And I want you to look at this equation just for a second. So tan theta, depending upon the values. So if you look at the way the tan grows, <clears throat> so tan is sine divided by cosine. So tan is going to become maximum close to 90 degrees. So initially the value of tan is zero and then tan would become maximum at 90 degrees close to one. So what happens is the load is say one kilonewton. Half of it multiplied by the tan of theta gets applied on the screw. So what that means is this toggle jack configuration can support significant amount of load with a very low turning torque. Now, what do I mean by turning torque? So please note at the end, what we are interested in is the torque that is applied. So this is the value of T. And T, please note, is load W by 2 tan alpha plus uh, phi multiplied by dm by two. But as you can see, this F, which is the load coming on the screw is the same as this W. Uh, so there is no T2 here. So W, uh, so this, uh, this load coming on uh, the, uh, in the torque equation, which means you can lift very heavy load with minimum amount of torque. And that is precisely the reason a toggle jack is used for car application. First, because it's compact and because of the way it is configured, because of the way it is geometry is set up, you can actually lift significant amount of load. So, how do you do the design of toggle jack? So design of toggle jack, of toggle jack is similar to the design of screw jack, but you have step zero. What is this step zero? In step zero, you know the load to be lifted. So this would be given to you. And I'm gonna call this load to be lifted as P. So a toggle jack is supposed to lift two kilonewton. And what you need to do is you need to find the value of W, which is load on screw. And load on screw is P by two tan of theta. Now, please understand they will give you the value of theta and value of theta 
will be given either directly or indirectly so so directly how it would be given so they would say uh, the toggle jack closing angle is 10 degrees so uh, maybe 15 degrees so closing angle is equal to 15 degrees and max open angle is maybe 35 degrees so what that means is toggle jack is this angle is 15 degrees when the toggle jack is closed what that means is this angle is 90 minus 15 which is 75 degrees because please understand our theta uh, we are looking is this angle 75 degrees and maximum open angle is 35 degrees so say this is 35 degrees which means this angle is 90 minus 35 which is 55 degrees so what we need to do is we need to find out the value of w in both cases when theta is 75 degrees and when theta is 55 degrees and take the maximum value some of you may say hey i know the value of tan is going to be maximum when theta is maximum so it's totally okay if you directly substitute 75 degrees and perform the calculations now step one onwards step one onwards all the steps are same as screw jack the only step zero is different now there is one more way this toggle jack angle can be specified and this is given in the textbook so sometimes they give you the geometry so they say that this link length maybe is 100 millimeters this nut uh, height is maybe 50 millimeters and they will specify this nut height to this distance and they will say this is 125 uh, actually or 75 millimeters so they say 75 millimeters and based on the geometry you can find out this angle so this angle so you can see this to be like 75 100 and you can find out 700 is the hypotenuse 75 is the distance opposite angle theta so you can find out uh, which is sine theta is equal to 75 by 100 and then find out the value for theta similarly they will give you that when the jack is opened then this distance is maybe uh, again it totally depends upon the jack design but this distance from here to here is say uh, 50 50 so that would change the effective value of theta so once you find out the load on the screw the design is exactly same at this point let me ask uh, if there are any questions any questions here if not uh, what I want to do is I want to give you uh, the design recipe for uh, uh, maybe C clamp. So, design recipe for C clamp. So, what is design of C clamp?
So what is this C clamp? This is the clamp that is in C shape. And what you have here is you can have a nut which is integral to the body. So basically you tap, drill and tap in the body or you drill and basically add a nut over here. And there is this screw. This screw has actually some sort of a small lever and there is the load plate and basically if you want to clamp something that object piece of paper uh, maybe wood that is to be glued is clamped between this is something called as the ram base ram base and usually there is a sit screw here so just to make sure that uh, the whole thing doesn't come out. There are different geometries. A most common use geometry is sort of, I don't know if you have seen this. This would be a, a T-shape geometry. So you would have either a, a T-section, I've seen I-section, uh, but so you can have either a T-section or you can have an I section. And based on that, uh, you can actually uh, design the, the screw jack body, I mean the C clamp body. Now, one question that I want to ask, uh, and that is, that is very important, is many a times, you would notice that the C clamp usually is sort of flattened here. So you have C clamp that is thin on the top and the bottom side, and the section modulus is increased at the midsection. And the reason for that is the maximum amount of load, which is combination of bending and direct load, is at section XX. So sometimes this section is oversized just to make sure that the C clamp does not deform or C clamp is able to support the load. Now in C clamp, when you design, there are two parts to design. First part we need to design is this guy. So we need to design design of screw and nut. And second part is design of cross section. So design of cross section. So what we would do is, I'm gonna write the steps for the design of screw, and then I would outline the steps for the design of cross section. Now, one thing that you want to think about is, so this, this question gets asked all the time. Do I need to remember the, the moment of inertia of T section, I section, or do I need to calculate? So if you have a section modulus to calculate, T section or I section, or if you have a very complicated cross section, like a trapezoidal section, or you have a trapezoidal T, I have seen those complicated sections. You don't really have to remember or calculate those section modulus. What you can do is you can refer a design data book. And if you don't have a design data book or machinery's handbook, or design reference, design reference, 
you might want to take a look at that. Uh, most of these books, they are readily available uh, as, uh, as some sort of ebook or a lot of information is available on Google. So what you can do is you can actually use some of these references and then just use the equations that are provided. So no need to remember. It's not possible to remember section modulus of hundreds and thousands of cross sections. Uh, as needed basis, you can just retrieve the information either from the textbook or from online. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the steps. So the step number one is we have to find out the core dia. Core diameter is found in direct compression. Area is pi by four d squared. So when you start with a screw jack design, the information that you have is load and stresses. Same information you have when you start a C-clamp. So direct compression, The area of cross section is pi by four t square. This diameter is d. Now, next thing is what we want to do is we want to find out the screw diameter. Screw diameter is d. Actually, let me see this core diameter DC, DC, DC. And, and just for my own satisfaction, let me just show it to you what is core diameter and what is screw diameter. If you look at the screw, the smallest diameter that you see in the screw is the core diameter smallest diameter that you see in the screw is core diameter. And there is outside diameter and there is dn. So screw diameter is sort of the mean diameter. So D, you can say dc uh, divided by 0.8. This is an approximate relationship. So dc divided by 0.8 gives you the screw diameter, but please note this must be modified or should be modified uh, as per standards. So nobody is going to cut a custom diameter screw for us. It will be super expensive. So what we will have to do is whatever diameter we get, whatever D we get, we modify as per the standard diameter that are available. So for that, you will go to Granger or you will go to MacMaster car and then find out the diameter. Next step is the total torque on screw. Is the same equation T is equal to W multiplied by D by two multiplied by tan alpha plus V. Where <clears throat> alpha is the helix angle and phi is the friction angle. And helix angle and friction angle values for C clamp, they are typically given in design data book. And we don't want C clamp uh, to be uh, uh, non-self-locking. So usually the C-clamps are self-locking. 
So we have to make sure that our helix angle and friction angle are within appropriate ranges so that the screw is self locking. Now, next thing that we want to calculate is the shear stress due to torsion. So tau is equal to T divided by IP multiplied by DC by two. Or if you, if you are familiar with uh, notation J, so, and J is equal to pi by 32 times DC to the power four. So from here, you would get the value of tau. Next step is calculate direct compressive stress. is equal to, I'm gonna call that sigma, which is P divided by pi by four DC. And I have to be very careful here. I'm gonna say modified square, because please understand that initially we got some value of DC. So we got some value of DC. From there, we got some value of D. But then we looked at the standards and now we have a different value of D and most likely that value of D is going to be greater than the value of D that we calculated. So we have to find out DCM corresponding to new D that we got from standards. So the value of D, a new D that we got from standard, D should be easy. Then we have to check for principal stress or sigma P. And sigma P is sigma one half square root of sigma square plus four tau square. And uh, once uh, this is done, next step is screw head diameter which is typically D2 is 1.75 times D and DS is equal to DC by 3. So where are these dimensions coming. So I'm going to just show you here. This dimension is D. This dimension is the dimension for the, the nut, which is I'm going to call maybe capital D. And then this dimension is D2 which we just found out. So this dimension is D2. Uh, we also have to find out the height of the nut, which is H. So these are the important dimensions. Next step is we have to find out the total torque. So six, step seven, total torque. is equal to load torque plus friction torque. And typically in, when you have huge amount of torque, for an example, screw jack, you can actually find out the friction torque the way we found out in the last class. But when the application is like C clamp, which is typically tightened by hand, you can just use say 1.3 to 1.5 times load torque as the full or total torque. So that is an approximation. This approximation valid for low load torques. So this is an approximation that you can use. 
Now next is you have to decide the length of handle. Length of handle. Now L is equal to total torque divided by available force. And typically in last class we talked about the available force if you are just going to you know use fingers or not going not going to use any additional lever arm you can say about 50 to 75 newtons of force you can apply so so if you think about it uh, how much uh, force you can apply with finger if you are super strong and intermittent you can go to 75 uh, newtons uh, but usually the load that you can apply with fingers is anywhere between uh, 25 to 50 for for normal person uh, continuous so so 50 to 75 and and where do i get these numbers from so there is something called as ergonomic And so if you have to design anything for humans, you refer to this ergonomic handbook. So basically this is referred when the chairs are designed. This is referred when the beds are designed. This is referred when the desks are designed or means uh, any, any mechanical component that comes in contact with human like human is sitting on it human is pushing it human is kicking it human is carrying it at that time you have to refer to ergonomic handbook to get the the recommended geometry recommended dimensions and recommended forces so ergonomic handbook is an important document when you are having human, the design, you are designing something called humanistic design, where human is involved. And that actually decides the, the size of the steering wheel in car, shape of the seats, length of the seats, uh, the spring constants of the seat, because there are standards for comfort. There are standards for uh, uh, using uh, uh, in hot climate or cold climate. So you need to follow those standards. So you refer to ergonomic handbook and that will tell you the forces and moments a human can apply uh, using different body parts. So once this is done, next thing is we have to find out the cross section of handle and that comes from bending so you apply loads P and this is the, the C clamp. This is L by two. So the moment is equal to P times L by two. And you can find out the cross section using the bending stress sigma is equal to M divided by I multiplied by Y. You can Typically, uh, you would use a circular cross section for C clamp. I haven't seen a rectangular cross section for handles for C clamps. So it would be M divided by pi by 64. Please note, this is not torque equation. This is the bending equation. D to the power four, D by two. That gives you D, which is dia of handle. The next part, is uh, looking at the screw design. So, so 10 is screw height. And here there are two approaches. Uh, if you remember the approach that we followed in last class, which is uh, looking at the, the nut height and then adding the overall height and then finding the total length of the screw. 
or sometimes they are given or they are dictated by the application so for an example they would tell you that this screw should be able to clamp say the clamping thickness is say 50 millimeters so clearly you don't want screw uh, to be stored in completely open position all the time so you know the closing distance at least should be 50 millimeter adding some type of clearance over here adding the height of the nut adding the excessive length on the top will dictate the total height of the screw so screw height is based on application and geometry so i would just say that the clamp height plus nut height plus clearance plus top gap plus sleeve thickness that would give you the screw height next step is height of the nut That comes from bearing. So sigma b is equal to p divided by pi by 4 p outside square or d square minus c square multiplied by n. So this is given to us, this is known. So we can find out value of n, which is number of threads in contact. Next is we have to check screw for crushing. And that is sigma c is equal to p divided by pi times dc multiplied by n divided by t. Now, please note, if you want to check nut for crushing, I mean, for, uh, for shearing, I apologize, this is shearing. Not for sharing. You would do the exact same thing. Only thing is you would use pi d n by 2 times pitch. Save the pitch. And then Last is design of frame. And design of frame is step one. So there are additional steps. So step A is assume the cross section. So you are welcome to use a rectangular cross section. You are welcome to use a T cross section, you are welcome to use an I cross section. Then find out max bending moment. So how would you find out the maximum bending moment? So look at the C clamp. You have the force P. You can find out the distance L. So P times L is going to be Vm max. Then what you do is you find out the total stress sigma is equal to P divided by A, which is the area of cross section. Assuming this is a rectangular cross section is A plus M divided by I multiplied by Y. 
So you have the direct stress and you have the bending stress. And what you need to do is you need to make sure this stress is less than sigma design. Now, there are some variations possible. In some variations, what you do is basically assume the relationship between T and W. So you say W is equal to four times T. And then once you follow the steps, this equation will be in terms of T. And once you know the value of T, you can find out the value of W. So please note, this is similar to lever design. And that is the beauty of design, that the fundamental principles are same, but depending upon the applications, we slightly modify those design equations. Now, I want to take a moment here and just give you some similarities or some points or pointers. So if you have to design a bracket, okay? So if you have to design a bracket, something like this. Same principles are applicable. So for example, if you see the side view of this bracket, and the reason I want to cover this is because there's a student who is actually in this class, actually designing a bracket. So here, the loading is symmetric. So you have the loading is symmetric. But many a times what happens is, you get side load on the bracket. You have side load on the bracket. And when you have the side load on the bracket, please note that this lever arm from here to here on this cross section. So if this is load P, P times L is going to give you moment. So same uh, uh, process, what we have talked about is applicable for the design of bracket. So with this, I want to stop here. Please note there is no class this Thursday. Uh, but we have covered enough material for you to finish, uh, I believe, till homework three. Uh, so please continue working. If you have any questions, shoot me an email and I will be happy to help via email. Otherwise, I will see you next Thursday. Any questions?